Hello, lovely. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. My name is Stephanie Classy. I am so excited to be here today and to be able to chat with you all about a really awesome topic. Today we're going to talk about delicate skin, the different needs of different areas of our skin and why they need different support and products and ingredients and just talk about how we can integrate um, a care plan into your skincare routine to make sure the delicate areas of your skin are really getting the care that they need. So again, my name is Stephanie Classy. I'm your Go Your Esthetician. Um, when you hop on, say hello. Um, if you're watching live, create a unique username because we're doing giveaways today and we love to give you support in the comments. And so when you are on, just create a username so you can engage in the chat, ask tons of questions, um, and you can have a chance to win a giveaway, but you can also share. So there's a little arrow at the bottom of the chat Chat. Hi, Brooke. Renita's on. I'm going to be kind of looking off to the sides because I do have the chat on both sides of me today. So we'll see how that works. And I am also joining you all almost completely makeup free. So I only have on my skincare and I filled in my eyebrows and I have a little bit of mascara on because we're gonna be talking about the delicate areas of the skin. I really wanted you all to be able to see my skin. Um, so I have no makeup on pretty much. Um, and we are gonna be talking all about delicate skin. So what is that? We're gonna be talking about the eye area, the neck area, the lips, the hands a bunch and we're also be talking about the underarms um so and if you have any questions any insight um please ask in the chat so we can it's both myself and then we have our amazing support um, behind the scenes uh answering your questions and if you do have a question if you finish your sentence with an actual question mark we can actually sort and find questions um really easily that way and guess what we're giving away today? Because we're talking about delicate areas, we are gonna actually be giving away your choice of the new eye cream, the Advanced Repair Eye Cream, amazing, or the Titan and Lift Neck Cream. So drop some hearts if you want your chance to win. Um, we also do this really fun game with um, the lives on here where we're just we just want to see how many hearts we can get um so if you drop those hearts um we always like to see our our total number of hearts that we can get on these lives just for fun and then right next to that heart button um, is where the share button is if you do want to share with your friends i always love when you all share so we can get as many people on here as possible so they can learn um, and they can also have a chance to win which is great hi joanne i see so many of you on here and all right so let me know if you have been on one of our lives before. Um, again, my name is Stephanie. I'm your GoPure esthetician, and I go live pretty much every week on a different skincare topic because here at GoPure, we care about making the cleanest, most effective, clinically proven skincare at a, an incredibly reasonable price. But we also really care about educating you all so you know how to use your products because consistency with skincare is really important. But I want you and we want you to feel really confident in your routine so you're even more excited to use it every single day so you can get the absolute best results possible. So if this is your first live event, let me know. Um, these are so much fun. And then if you're watching on replay, because um, this the replay for this will be available in our amazing GoPure VIP community on Facebook. So if you're watching there on replay or if you just wanna rewatch this again, make sure you're in our VIP group. Um, but we also choose a winner from the replay watchers, which is super fun. So there's a lot of fun going on. And I see Renita's joining us from Louisiana. Um, let, it, let me know where you're joining us from and feel, oh, Carrie, this is your first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, and once again, I am joining you makeup free. I literally just have my eyebrows poorly filled in and a little mascara and a little lip balm. I have no other makeup on today because we're talking about the delicate areas of the skin. And I really wanted you all to be able to see my skin. I really don't wear a lot of like coverage products, but 
We're gonna be talking about how the skin is different on these different areas, the eye area, the lip area, the neck and decollete, the hands and even the underarms. So I thought, hey, listen, let's just be able to look at my skin as, as good as possible. Um, and so, oh, we have so many people joining us from all over and someone has seen us on TikTok, yay, because if you follow us on our show, social channels, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, there's so much to learn. And I put out a bunch of TikToks a week, answering questions, teaching about products and skin and skincare. So that is another great place to learn. Um, and I uh, see Raquel, this is your first time. Christina's joining us from Riverside, California. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I see uh, Lil is watch watching from Minnesota. Laura's from Oklahoma. Um, Oh, Nan, that's a great question. Is the niacinamide booster um, over face, neck, and decollete? Yes, it absolutely can be. And I'm going to totally talk about that too. Um, so I am so excited. So let's talk about why certain areas of the face and body need special care. Why can't we just do the same things that we do on our face in everywhere? Um, and why maybe do we need special products? because I wanna be perfectly honest with you. Not all products that are formulated to target delicate areas, like I said, eyes, lips, neck, decollete, hands, and even underarms, they're not all formulated equally. And certain ingredients um, will impact this area differently. Products will sit on this area differently. And the right products and clinical testing are very important. And I am gonna talk about that, but these areas are very delicate. They tend to be really easily irritated and they're generally the first to show the visible signs of aging. So think about that. The areas, the eye, the hands, and the neck and decollete especially, and even the lips. Drop some hearts or a comment if you agree that these areas show the signs of aging kind of first. <laughs> Those are some of the areas where we will kind of look in the mirror one day and be like, what just happened? What is going on here? When did this happen? When did I get that spot? When did that line show up? When, when did this happen? Um, and sometimes it feels like it can happen overnight, but our skin is our largest organ and it participates in a lot of different functions. And so skin around the face and body is actually structured differently to help participate in those functions. So I have a little piece of fluff in my, in my lip balm. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Shelly, yeah, and Shelly says she thinks Go Pure should have a lip balm. I would not be opposed to that either because funny thing about lips and lip balm is that I am always surrounded at my desk with at least three different lip balm products um, because I live in Denver and it's very dry and I talk a lot for my job and it's very drying. And I am gonna talk about the lips too. Um, but it's these different areas are participating in protecting us. And I, cause I always talk about, yes, our skin's our largest organ and it works so hard to protect us but it does more than just protect us. And like I say, keep the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. It um, is the major component of heat regulation for us. Secretion and like sweat secretion and oil excretion and sensation with all of our nerves and absorption. Your skin does a lot. Um, and it's not only our biggest, but our heaviest. And it's the only organ that we have that participates in as many functions in that way. Um, and so the different areas of the body that contribute to those functions are actually structured differently. Um, and so you're gonna see a common theme as we go through this discussion about the actual differences in how the skin is structured and why these areas need targeted care and targeted products and then what we can do about it. Does that sound good? Drop some hearts if that sounds good because we wanna see how many hearts we can get. And I'm gonna work on staying hydrated too. And on the, the topic of hydration, I do wanna put in this note for you all to be kind of thinking about throughout this discussion too. Um, and the concept of hydration and skin. Hydration refers to the water content in the skin. And moisturization generally refers to the oil content or an oil water combination. And 
And there are a lot of factors that contribute overall to skin hydration. And I'm talking about the water content of the skin. And so when skin becomes dehydrated and loses too much water, and I'm also talk about some of the areas, these areas don't do as good a job of producing oil and staying hydrated. Dehydrated skin is more red. It's more prone to inflammation and irritation, but it's also much more prone to looking like the fine lines and deeper wrinkles or are more visible. So I live in Denver, but I also travel for work and travel is really dehydrating and it's very dry where I live. And there are times when I travel or when I feel more dehydrated, I instantly see it in the more delicate areas of my skin, my hands. I will look like I have a different person's hands, my eye area in particular, and my neck and decollete and even around my lips. I will notice when I'm losing more hydration because my skin visibly looks like my fine lines are more prominent. It is very, very evident. So think about that too, because these areas of the skin, um, and I'm, I'm gonna get into it. We're gonna get into learning about some skin physiology here, but that's, that's something to kind of think about throughout this. And Lynn says, I worry that the back of my hands need attention. They look older than they should. And that we're, we're gonna talk so much about hands today because a couple of weeks ago, we had the big launch um, of our amazing advanced repair eye cream. And if you're watching this live, you can actually shop while, um, while we're live if you wanna grab anything, which is really cool. But I talked really, really in depth about the eye area. I've talked a lot about the neck and decollete. We're absolutely gonna talk about that, but I really wanna touch a lot on the backs of the hands because that is another area that is impacted by just the very different way the skin is structured um, and skin physiology um, and factors. And yay, Brooke is our first winner. Congratulations, Brooke. Comment, drop hearts ask questions, all of that for your chance to win. And if you're just joining us, yes, I am here barefaced. I just have my brows filled in kind of badly. I don't think I did a very good job today with my eyebrows, but it's fine. And a little mascara, because I really want you all to be, I will get up close and personal. I want you all to be able to see my skin and really see what I'm talking about as we go through this. So drop smarts if you want to learn a little bit or a lot about skin physiology and the layers of the skin and how our skin is structured. And that's going to be the foundation of the understanding about these delicate areas. So drop some hearts. Let me know who wants to learn about um, biology 101 when it comes to our skin. So we have three main layers of our skin. Um, and I'm going to show you a cool picture because I love I love show and tell, and I love showing pictures. So I'm gonna hold that up in a minute, but our epidermis is that outer layer of the skin. It's what we touch, it's what we see. Um, cell turnover happens there. Our protective lipid barrier is there. Our natural moisture factor that helps hold on to water um, and pull it and keep it in the skin. Um, the cells that produce the pigment are in that layer, the opening to our sweat glands, and there's a lot of cells with different functions just in the epidermis. So when I talk about the epidermis, it's this outer layer here of the skin, and I'm gonna turn the page really quick. And it has all of these different layers in the skin. So all the epidermis has all these layers with different cells, um, and on areas like the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet, it's actually different. We have an extra layer in our epidermis that makes it thicker. Um, and the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet are actually really different just even in the epidermis because it has an extra layer in there, which is really cool. Then we have the middle layer called the dermis. Um, fibroblasts are cells that produce that collagen. Um, we have that elastin and hyaluronic acid is naturally in between that. And that gives our skin strength, stretch, structure, and plumpness. Our hair follicles are there, oil glands, blood vessels, nerves, and the base of those sweat glands um, in that middle layer. So this middle layer here, that's what I'm talking about, that middle layer. And as we age, we lose fullness. UV exposure damages this and it shrinks. So think about as we age, these layers shrink and the area that connects them shrink. Now the bottom layer here is the hypodermis and that is a fat layer. And 
so it is more vascular. We have more blood vessels there. We have nerves there, but that fat layer is gonna be really crucial to this conversation too. So all of these layers get impacted as we age um, and they're different layer levels of thickness around our body. And in those delicate areas, the eye area, the neck, the decollete and the hands especially, there, that, the, that fat layer is thinner naturally. The layers are thinner. Um, so when you have those layers being thinner on those areas, you can think about, okay, that makes sense. They're already thinner. They're already more delicate. They have less structure than the rest of the body. And so you can see how as we age, they can be impacted. Um, well, and Jana, that's, and we're gonna talk about what we can do for sure, because as the skin thins, it gets more slack. As those layers thin, it gets more slack and our lines and wrinkles um, become more prominent. But with age and UV exposure, those other functions like the increase in pigmentation um, is also a factor. Um, <laughs> So, and that's Cali Gal, that's true. And so it's one of those things where losing that fat layer naturally as we age, um, it's a cushion to our skin. But you can think when we lose that, especially through here, there's a lot of structural changes that happen through here, a lot through here, and in our hands that contribute to the visible signs of aging and contribute to that skin just generally being more delicate and vulnerable. So let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the eye area because I did a big live on it, but, um, oh, and I love so many of you hopping on. Um, welcome, welcome, introduce yourself, G get your username in here, um, and don't feel bad if you miss anything because this will be available on replay. Um, and again, I'm here concealer free, so let's talk about the eye area. Um, so the skin around the eyes is five to 10 times thinner um, than the skin on the rest of the face. And then our eyelid skin is actually, this is the thinnest skin on our entire body. It's super, super, super thin. Um, and it's very vascular. So when I say the word vascular, I'm talking about blood vessels, veins, capillaries, all of that. And I wanna get really close. I want you guys to see my eyes. So look at my eyes. I don't have any, I just have a little mascara on. So you can see this darkness through here. That is because the skin is thin and we can actually just kind of see what's going on underneath it. Um, and so as we age, our blood vessels lose integrity and they weaken and we can leak things like hemoglobin and bilirubin and all of that. But look, you can actually see the veins in my eyelid. This skin is very, very thin, very delicate. And it loses that fat and protein as we age, but it's also very exposed to UV. So UV and environmental stressors um, age our skin more than anything. And think about that, because remember, all these things I'm talking about are very common in all these delicate areas. So UV and environmental stressors age our skin more than anything, but the natural things that happen as we age, as those layers thin in the fat that gets lost in that deeper layer, really impacts those thinner areas more than anywhere else. Um, but it's also an area of movement. Our eyes move all day. We actually make over 100,000 eye movements a day that occur in less than one one hundredth of a second. And a lot of those are involuntary. We don't think necessarily when we blink or, you know, we're looking around, we're squinting, we're smiling, we're laughing. You know, we are, we are moving and that area moves and that's great. However, that movement puts strain on the structures in our skin and the stretch and can damage elastin. And the areas that get consistent movement, that's where those lines start to stay and the skin just doesn't bounce back the same. Um, and Lori's saying I have indentations under my eyes. Um, and that's why, again, when we're talking about like an eye cream formulation, this formulation is was it has been clinically tested. It just doesn't have a few things in there. This has five ingredients that go beyond just the other awesome ingredients that specifically target the major concerns. But let's look at the eye area too. Um, we can get redness underneath here um, and that darkness underneath here from shadowing because remember we have bone here, this bone structure right here. And so as this starts to sink in, as we lose that structure, we start getting shadowing. And I do this thing and I want everyone to try this sometime, okay? 
depending on how your light moves, I'm gonna move my light, maybe it'll help. You can move your light around and your face around and actually change how the dark circles look. And that's a really interesting way to tell kind of what is shadowing and what's light because it's, it's structural. Um, that's why the concealer industry is huge. <laughs> and one thing too is that um, it's very sensitive. So it's next to the, our eyeball and a mucous membrane and the eye is very susceptible to irritation and infection. I wanna check some comments. And Trudy says, my eyelids are oily, what can I do? And that's what's really interesting too is that our eyelids up here can be very, very oily and then other areas can be very dry and dehydrated. So even this area can act very differently than this area here. Um, and Sandy doesn't know what to do to be a VIP member. You just join our VIP community on Facebook. We can drop that link in here as well. The Go Pure VIP community is awesome. And I'm starting, I'm trying to look for, for comments. So give me just a minute. Um, <laughs> so I just try to keep up on, you guys ask the best questions. Um, Lil says, I don't want turkey neck. Is it too late? And we're going to talk about the neck as well. Um, Ellen says, I have freckles under my eyes. People think I have black eyes. You know what's funny? My mom has freckles right here too. And people always think she has mascara on her face. <laughs> And it's just a freckle that she has there. Um, because that's another part of it is those layers are so thin that we can see not just what's going on in the, the epidermis with hyperpigmentation and dark spots. We are literally seeing what is going on in those deeper layers as well because it's so vascular. We have all those capillaries and blood vessels. Um, and and. Linda says that she has dry spots on her eyelids. So we're gonna talk about care, but that's why it's really important around the eye area to use ingredients that are gentle. We wanna clean the eye area. Um, our new micellar makeup remover wipes are awesome and they're very, very gentle. You can also use our oils. Um, oils are very, very easy on the eye area. I love the argan and rose hip around the eye area because they can also, it helps with the oiliness and the dryness, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm gonna get into it towards the end, I'm gonna really get into the routines as well. So let's talk about the lips. Our lips have a thinner outer layer. So our, our lips have a very, very thin outer layer. Next, did you know, and let me know if you knew this. Oh, congratulations, Trudy, you just won our choice of a neck cream or an eye cream. So we can use our eye care around our lips. Our lips don't have sebaceous glands or skin pigment. So sebaceous glands are what produce the oil in our skin and that protective barrier. That's why they get so dry and it's a mucous membrane. And so it's easily dried out, really easily sunburned, susceptible to illness and infection. And it thins as we age because we lose that fat layer. We have a so we start to lose fullness. We start to see those lines and wrinkles, but that's also why we have to be careful around the lips and especially the corners of the mouth. And I actually have a little owie right here because I think I got a little too close to my lips with my retinol and this area can actually crack. And that's why I say be very careful and we don't wanna get our retinol too close this area can crack because it doesn't produce oil naturally and that oil protects our skin. And so that's why that area is very different. And again, it thins as we age. And um, so when we lose the fullness and when we're losing fullness in the skin, we start to um, be able to see those lines and wrinkles. And again, this is an area of movement. So are you seeing the common theme? <laughs> Thinner skin layers, they thin even more as we age, they're delicate, um, and areas of movement. And so you see, we're already starting to see a common theme here. So let's talk about the neck and the decollete as well. So the skin on the neck is thinner and weaker than the skin on the face. It has less of that fatty tissue and it has less sebaceous glands, those oil glands on the face. So basically it's thinner, it's dry, it produces less oil, so it's drier. And it's very, very exposed to UV radiation that is very stressful on those layers, breaks down our collagen. Um, it's an area of movement. And there's actually a thing that they're calling now called, and I'm seeing a lot of questions about the neck area. 
tech neck. So what does tech neck mean? We've heard of turkey, you know, everyone talks about the turkey neck thing that happens. Well, tech neck is this thing that's happening with so many people being on computers and phones and all of this that our movement in our neck, specifically from how we interact with technology, is actually causing distinct lines and wrinkles in the neck in a way that it hadn't before because of how everyone is using technology. And it's really interesting, but it is, it's thinner, it's weaker, and it has less elasticity. Elasticity is that stretch. So areas that have less elasticity that you're moving, the movement is gonna damage it so much more. And even our sleep position and the weight of our chest has an impact. Um, and I, I am always honest with you all, right? Drop some hearts if you know. I'm your SD bestie, I have your back. <laughs> I, I'm not here to set unrealistic expectations, ever. I want you all to feel empowered in your skincare routine and know how your skincare can help you meet your skin goals. And so I'm seeing questions about the neck, the eyes, the lips, all of that. Skincare cannot change those certain structural changes that are happening. So the loss of that fat layer, those types of things. Your skincare, it works to improve the condition and the appearance of your skin. Um, and that's why, again, Formulated products for these areas are really important. So for like the neck area, this is the most incredible neck cream I've ever used. And I'm being totally serious. It has a proprietary blend of moisturizers and hyaluronic acid and peptides along with a bunch of other ingredients that I'm gonna get into in a bit that really help target the specific needs. This, and that's why I get asked a lot, can I just use my face cream? You can, you can ask, because we want this to be moisturized. We want this to be hydrated. However, when you have thinner skin and we already know elasticity is the issue, that's what causes that sagging and that crepiness. You want ingredients that actually target elasticity and also products that are lighter weight, so they're not gonna be heavy. There's a different weight to the neck cream than a face cream. So you need products that are gonna hydrate without being heavy, and that are gonna target the specific needs. That's why an eye cream is different than just your face cream. That's why a neck cream is different than just your face cream, because we know the skin is thinner, and we know that it has different needs. The eye area has a lot of needs with those vascular issues and with um, collagen and elastin and hydration. The neck is very elastin focused and has issues with it being drier and very, very thin. And so that's why we have these formulated products, but your skincare is not going to alter physiology. And all of these areas have very significant physiological under uh, like an undercurrent and that's what we're talking about here right um and so that's why it's important to have targeted products and then just understand the physiology and understand you know the limitations of skincare as well because nothing will make this sd bestie more mad than someone trying to pretend like skincare is going to solve every problem we've ever had we want our skin to be taken care of and hydrated and moisturized and we want to use targeted products I'm just gonna have to be staying hydrated here because I'm <laughs> I'm feeling dehydrated today with all this chatting. Ah, so who's ready to talk about hands? <laughs> Let's talk about hands. And you guys are so sweet talking about my skin because I have no makeup on. I have literally some mascara and my brow stuff because I really wanted you all to be able to see my skin very very well today. So we're makeup free to talk about skin. Carol, I'm going to totally talk about, towards the end, I'm going to go through the routine. So I promise I will talk about um, layering and order of operations. But I want to really talk about hands because I don't think I've really ever had like an in-depth conversation about why are our hands are, are actually so, the layers of our skin are so interesting when it comes to our hands. So like I said earlier, are the palms of our hands actually have an extra layer in the epidermis. Um, and it really adds to the cushion of our hands. But we also don't have the same ability to produce oil. And so 
let's let's get into it. Let's talk about hands. Oh, and I see someone saying they have eczema on the top of the, their hands. Um, I'm definitely gonna address that because my son, um, my son actually struggles with eczema on his hands because he compulsively washes them. And it has been the craziest process to heal his hands. <laughs> so yes, and Diane says her hands are always dry. So let's talk about it. Our hands are work, our hands work so hard. Our hands are always moving. Um, our hands are what differentiate us from other mammals because this opposable thumb action, but our hands are so functional. And our palms and our fingers are hard and our hand, they naturally lack what is called our natural moisture factor. So I talked a lot about our skin's protective lipid barrier, which is a combination of these lipids, but our natural moisture factor um, is, is what our lipid barrier kind of wants to lock in. And it is comprised of elements that help keep our skin hydrated. Remember that water component. Our hands are naturally lacking in that. So when we're talking about how our hands feel dry, well, they're not as good at producing oil and they lack, lack the hydration component. So that's rough. And our skin is thin and it can't bind to moisture properly. And so you're going, okay, well, my hands work really hard and they're not as good at producing oil and they lack the natural moisture factor and can't bind onto <laughs> moisture properly. We already see how our hands are just, it's a situation. Rhonda says her stay in dishwater. That's the next thing. Our hands are regularly exposed to solvents and surfactants and chemicals and all of these things that then strip them even more of what they are already naturally lacking. So we're sitting there like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do about that? Okay, but wait, our hands are also really exposed to all of these other environmental things like UV, that is the most damaging thing and environmental stressors. And we're using our hands. Oh, it's another area of movement. <laughs> so do we see these like commonalities in here? But they're also very vascular I, and bony. So let's look at my hands. So you can see the veins in our hands. So that vascular and it's bony. And as we age, our hands heal more slowly because our cell turnover slows. And I don't know if I've ever shared this with you all before. Our cell, blah, blah, blah. our cell turnover throughout our body is actually even slower than on our face. So as we age, our cell turnover naturally slows. We naturally produce less collagen and that fat layer thins. Well, our hands have a very thin layer of that subcutaneous layer, that hypodermis. They're so thin. I mean, think about it. Those areas that lack that fat layer naturally, pinch them, feel them, you know? It's different, but the, the skin in our body, the cell turnover is actually even slower than on our face. And so as we age, another concern with our hands is that it heals more slowly. So you have, and the skin is very, very thin here. So it's thicker here, thinner here. And so I am always bumping my hands. Like I literally always have cuts on my hands, always, because I'm always doing stuff at a million miles an hour running into things, but as we age, our cell turnover is even slower, our hands heal more slowly, and it's just thin skin that's really exposed, naturally more dry, naturally more dehydrated. And so we really, really need to care for our hands a lot. Who here feels like they could do a better job caring for their hands? Because I do. And I try really hard, but I, know that there's so much more that I can do. Um, and I'm seeing someone says, yeah, hands are super dry, noticing wrinkles on the top. And remember when I talked about hydration and when our skin gets dehydrated, it looks more crepey and wrinkly. When we start, when we lose that water component, that's when those fine lines and wrinkles and crepiness look very apparent. And so, um, I am actually really obsessed with the anti-wrinkle moisturizer on the tops of my hands or the neck cream. But when my hands are really, like I'll look at my hands at different points in the day and do this sometime. Think about this. 
Look, just look at your hands at different points in the day and be aware. There are times I look at my hands and all throughout the day, it's like I'm looking at a different person's hands. At any given moment, depending on what time it is, how hydrated I am, if I washed my hands and didn't put moisturizer on, um, if I just washed dishes or whatever, throughout the day, my hands look so different and that is really so directly related to that level of hydration and moisturization. And I will say that the glycopeptide anti-wrinkle moisturizer on the tops of my hands will, for me, it's just an instant visible difference. I love this on the tops of my hands. Um, and I remember I did a live video once from our studio in LA and I was comparing my hands with how they look. But I'm gonna talk about hands too. I'm, I'm gonna put some on right now. Um, that, I just lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm going to later, I'm gonna talk about hands, but serums on the hands and SPF on the hands are really important. But I think that sometimes we don't do, and this is one of the things that led to my son's hands being in such a bad condition because um, he has really severe eczema on the tops of his hands from just absurd hand washing, especially when you're in school and all of this stuff. But our, the palms of our hands are built so differently than the outsides of our hands. So the palms of our hands do not absorb moisturizer the same as the outer layer of our hands do. So I know that I have avoided and I, I having conversations with my son, the reason he was so hesitant to put stuff on the backs of his hands was because he didn't like the greasy feeling stuff left on the palms of his hands. And he's very sensitive to touch, but our palms aren't going to absorb because of the, the way the skin here is different than the backs of our hands. So I'll just pump stuff on the back sometimes and just go like this with the backs of my hands because our hands won't even absorb the same. So sometimes we avoid skincare here or here because of what it can feel like here. And so, you know, you can have something to wipe it off, but that's, that's a really interesting component to hand and hand care is that we can always just, anything extra that I'm doing with my skincare, everything goes on the backs of my hands, always. Um, it's go face, blah, 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 hands, always, always. But I always put my stuff on my neck too. So that's just something, if you take anything away from this, <laughs> the serums, all the things, if you're gonna put them on your face, put them on the backs of your hands and your neck and decollete as well, because it is difference making. And actually when I really consciously started doing that during the day as well, not just at night, because at night, that's easy. You know, we're gonna do our skincare, we're gonna go to bed, but during the day, maybe we avoid that, but the sun is what damages us so much. So I started being very conscious about putting my vitamin C products and my day products on my hands, and I have, it's bananas. I had so much hyperpigmentation that was starting to show up, and I even have this freckle here I've had as long my whole life. And this is already almost gone even. I have spots and I didn't realize that I was looking at some pictures um, from like a year ago and so much hyperpigmentation in my hands is gone because of just me consciously doing my day routine on the backs of my hands too. It was, it's been amazing. Um, Oh yeah, and that's a great, um, I see Irma Sue saying, if I, anything's left in my palms, I'll use it on my stomach, arms, or legs. I love that, that's amazing. And this is why you guys just leave the best ideas in the comments, you just all do. Okay, I actually, this was a last minute add to the conversation. I wanna talk about the underarm area too, because it is a delicate area, and I really wanted to add this in because, um, it, it's, it's a sensitive area and the skin is really different. So the skin under the arms is sensitive. It rubs against each other. It doesn't get a lot of light and air. So it creates an environment that things like yeast and bacteria and even fungus really like, but our skin does not like. It's also exposed to skin treatments, waxing, shaving, um, the, the chemicals and things that are in our deodorants and antiperspirants. It's dark and moist. Um, the metabolization of um, bacteria in the pore and the microbiome produce odor and it needs extra care. Who here have or ever thought your armpits need special care? <laughs> but think about it and this, this is personal, I'm gonna tell you some things. So I, with this role that I have here at GoPure now, I'm not used to 
sitting at a desk as much. And um, I'm used to being on set and doing makeup for you know TV shows or magazines, and it's a lot more movement. But being more sedentary in this role and sitting, my arms sit like this more. And they felt so much more sensitive because when you think about that contact and more sweat and just lack of movement, and when you're it's dark and you're just creating a more consistent environment for things that are hard on our skin. And Sandra says like the under boobs too. It's think about any area where you get that skin on skin contact can be very related, but our underarms also participate. When I remember I was talking about the different functions of the skin and uh, thermal regulation and temperature regulation, our underarms participate in that a lot. Um, and so humans have 2 million to 5 million eccrine sweat glands. It's a very specific type of sweat gland um, with an average of 150 to 340 per square centimeter. So we have a lot of sweat glands, but we actually have two different kinds. Um, so eccrine glands occur over our, our whole body and open directly under the surface of the skin. Apocrine glands are hair follicle sweat glands. So areas where you have more hair naturally, like under the arms, um, have that type of sweat gland in that hair follicle that leads to the surface of the skin. And so we have those extra sweat glands there too. And that just creates a different environment under there. So it does need extra care. Um, so as we age, what happens? How, how do we, what, so what happens when we start to see the signs of aging in these different areas? And Lori says exfoliate under your arms. We're totally gonna talk about that. So let's talk about hands because we have, we spent some time on hands and I wanna give our, the hand care, you know, the, the time that it deserves. So photo aging, the backs of our hands, photo aging is the signs of aging that are directly, um, from UV exposure. So when we talk about photo aging, it's those signs of aging, lines, wrinkles, sagging skin, crepiness, hyperpigmentation concerns that are a direct result of sun exposure and UV radiation. But our hands can actually be very susceptible to precancerous and cancerous growths as well from sun exposure and then the depletion of the collagen and elastin. Um, and when, again, we're talking about thinner, even paper thin, fragile skin on our hands, um, photo aging plays a significant role. And we, th those lines, those wrinkles, that crepiness and that hyperpigmentation, and we even have to be very careful to get checked for um, skin cancer. And so then we lose that the natural side of aging, the hand volume. So that as that fat cushion that's already very thin, um, depletes, it's incredibly noticeable that we start seeing the tendons, the bones, the veins over time. Um, and even a small amount of changes just look so much more dramatic because it's already so thin. Um, the eye area, the concerns we see there. And if you guys have any specific concerns, definitely, definitely uh, drop them in the comments. The visible signs, those lines and wrinkles, the crow's feet that we have here, we can get fine lines and then those fine lines in, a, in those areas of movement are where we generally get those deeper wrinkles. Um, discoloration, two different main types, that area under here and then along here and so the upper and lower lid have discoloration possibility and then the dark circles here and then any additional hyperpigmentation from the sun. And again, th that discoloration is caused from a lot of things, being able to just shadowing from bone structure, from that loss of fat, from being able to see the what's going on under there with our blood vessels, all of that puffiness. Yes, Patty, absolutely puffiness, sagging skin. And we talk about bags, bags under the eyes um, are, it's used for a lot of different things, for puffiness, for sagging skin. And some of that puffiness is even just from lymph and from fluids too. And so there's so many things because when that skin is thin, we're gonna notice everything that's going on underneath there. Um, and it can be oily or dry and dehydrated and patchy. So let's, I wanna talk about um, the Advanced Repair Eye Cream. So the eyelid too is very different because the skin gets very slack from movement and you can actually even get fat that shifts 
from up here to down here in different areas. Did you guys know that your fat can actually just shift around there? That's not, <laughs> so that can happen too. We can have bags and puffiness simply from fat that shifts into different areas. So this eye cream is amazing because it was formulated specifically to target all of those concerns in different ways. So I'll run through the ingredients. So Haloxyl is one that enlightens the eye, it visibly brightens the look of eyes, reduces the look of eye circles, and that's a peptide blend. I mean, it works to eliminate the buildup of bilirubin under the eye that we can visibly see. And I wanna talk about clinical studies here because clinical studies are really important when we're talking about products formulated for delicate areas because you just wanna make sure someone's not just taking a regular moisturizer and putting it in a, a little jar and saying it's for the eye because there are companies that do that. Um, so that's why we are so big on clinical studies here at Go Pure. And um, in a clinical study, under eye circles were visibly reduced for more than 60% of volunteers, specifically the look of both red and blue toned dark circles. Um, and why does that matter? 60% is actually a really big number for this because remember when I was talking about dark circles and discoloration are caused by a lot of different things and there's a lot of physiology there. So now, Syncol is another ingredient and improves the appearance of those lines and wrinkles and skin elasticity. Eyeless is the ingredient that targets the under eye bags and that is a peptide blend. Um, so it works on under eye bags and improves the appearance of puffiness. Um, and Rhonda, yes, you can put the eye cream up on the upper lid as well. Um, Shadow Nil is the uh, responsible and renewably sourced um, sea vegetal off the coast of Maine. And this brightens and illuminates the under eye area. It is another ingredient that targets the appearance of dark circles. And one of my favorites um, is called Oleoactive. And these come from um, an Ayurvedic Indian tree um, and it reduces the appearance of kind of everything. Puffiness, crow's feet, lines and wrinkles and it has a, um, an advanced delivery method called biomimetism. And so that's another thing is that when you have a skin that is thin and delicate, you have to make sure that products are actually gonna absorb and get to the places they need to. So it's actually very, there's very advanced technology with these ingredients to allow them to absorb and basically do their job. <laughs> and so 68% of volunteers with this ingredient observed firmer, tighter looking skin, 73% observed less puffy looking under eye, 77 reported less dark looking circles, and 82% reported a fresher overall eye look. Now, that's just that one ingredient for all those clinicals. And I listed all of those. So that's why this is amazing because it has multiple ingredients that target multiple concerns. And yes, you can use your eye care around the lips. I um, literally have a crack here because I got my retinol too close for too many days and um, it got, my lip area got dry. And because your lip area does not produce oil, your lips don't have sebaceous glands. Once you start doing something that creates um, dryness, it's, you have to work really hard to work backwards from it. And so the lips are prone to those lines, wrinkles, cracking, flaking, um, and we lose color and fullness as we age. And so I love using my eye care around my lips. So both the eye gel, because the eye gel is amazing, and I didn't even talk about this, but the eye gel is more of a serum and it's got the vitamin E and the peptides, the plant stem cells, but I love both of these around the lips. Um, they're very safe for around the lips um, and they can help target the concerns around the lip area as well. Neck area, let's talk about it. Um, Rhonda, or no, it wasn't Rhonda. Ellen's asking which retinol I use. I use all of them, and I make also. I and I'll, I'll, um, I love the the Firm and Lift Serum because it has the Granactive Retinol and Bacuchiol, um, and that's a great question. So these areas, the delicate areas, you do have to be more careful when you're talking about using ingredients like retinol because these areas are thinner and drier, they generally produce less oil, they are next to mucous membranes, and so 
Um, I like to always give space to these areas because remember, when you apply something to the skin, it doesn't just absorb in that area, it absorbs and expands. And so if you get too close to the eye, it's gonna absorb and expand. And that's what happened here for me is I just got a little careless and I didn't give enough of a buffer because it always will absorb closer and it's very, very dry. But the form of retinol in the Firm and Lift Serum is a granactive retinoid. Now, granactive retinoid is much easier to tolerate on the skin and our skin actually recognizes this form of retinol better and it also has bakuchiol. And so I absolutely love this on the neck, on the backs of my hands and I'm gonna share some tips um, with you all too. Um, yes, and Kim, you can use the eye gel and the eye cream together for sure. Um, so neck, let's talk about the neck. We get crepiness, we get sagging, because remember we lose so, there's so many physiological changes that happen through here. I notice from the side, I'm already starting to notice some of those physiological changes through here. We can get jowling that happens because the muscle changes through here also. Muscles, like this area through here goes through significant structural changes. But we can get deeper lines from movement, like we talked about, and discoloration, um, it gets very dry, we have a lack of hydration, and when our skin becomes more dehydrated, the lines and wrinkles look more prominent. So, this, this jewel of a product that I love so much, um, you just can get more hydrated looking skin and it's not heavy. Um, we have what is called the Proactive Repair Firming Complex in here. So it's a blend of a lower weight hyaluronic acid, a cup kupuwasu butter, which is actually very moisturizing and rich in omegas, and it's hydrating, and so it's not gonna be heavy. Um, Sacha Inchi is a really awesome natural plant peptide that I'm hearing a lot more about, other people talking about, but guess what, we already use it. Um, and so it's those peptides, that hyaluronic acid and those omegas, but then we also have a bunch of proprietary ingredients in here that target that elasticity, um, that slack skin, um, and so you have the Vexil SP that addresses the crepiness, because crepiness can be so big through here. So I like, I consider the jaw area and down and then onto the decollete, so I do like to bring this up through here as well, um, that targets and improves the appearance of elasticity. Matrobust also targets the appearance of skin firmness, um, tightness, plumpness. And then Readyless is actually an ingredient that improves the appearance of the discoloration that we can get through here as well, because we can absolutely get redness and discoloration. Um, and this really works on improving skin tone because we do get um, unevenness that can happen through here as well. Um, and again, um, Bellin. Um, so Bellin, the demonstration of that, I, I'm gonna try when I get onto application, but I also, if I just did a live all about eye care and we did a ton of application, I show some really cool things in that. So I'm gonna show you some stuff, but definitely um, in if you're in our VIP group, I have a whole live all about eye care and it is amazing and I do a lot of different applications. Um, so let's talk about neck, um, the clinicals with the neck cream. Where are you, neck cream? Here you are. So again, clinicals are very important. The, the Sacha Inchi I was talking about that is in here, 21 day study found that skin roughness decreased by 20%. Um, and this is like actual measurements. Like they're really measuring that and that's a big difference. The Vexil SP, a 28 day study found 85% of their people, 85% of people said their skin was less slack and 78% said skin was firmer. So I'm having questions about, um, you know, will it help this, will it do that? It takes consistent skincare. And remember, skincare products are working on the condition and appearance of the skin. Um, and then Matrobust, this is one of my favorite clinicals. The Matrobust, in a study on perceived sensations after one use, so one use of the Matrobust, that's just one of the ingredients in here is the Matrobust, 100% of respondents said their skin overall improved and sagged less. I love that, I love that. And we that's just one ingredient. I'm talking about all of these ingredients working together um, and it's amazing. Um, how do we join the VIP group? Um, we can drop the link in here. It is on Facebook, it is the GoPure VIP community. Um, and it's just such an amazing community. And we there's replays of these, um, 
we people ask questions you have a direct connection to me and our amazing customer service team so it's great um and if you guys, I see some people talking, you can grab anything from this live too. You can shop and learn at the same time. So it's really super fun. So that's why, um, oh, and the underarm area. So that the concerns we have there, you can get odor, dryness, fungus, bacteria, irritation, clogged pores, clogged glands, ingrown hairs. Um, we actually get like, can get a darkening of the skin under the arms as well. So what can we do? What can we do about this? So again, targeted products, and I was highlighting a couple of our targeted products, um, proper layering of our skincare, um, and SPF. That's really, really important because skincare designed for these areas and formulated are just going to do a better job of addressing the unique concerns that these thinner areas, areas of movement that are exposed to the sun, all of that. Did you, who was picking up on a, a common theme here? These areas are thinner, they're more exposed, <laughs> they don't produce oil as well, or some don't at all. Um, and as we age, they just get even more thin. And so they're really very delicate areas that do require targeted care. And then a side note to eye products, because I love the questions you all ask about how and where this can be applied. Eye products actually go through additional testing to make sure that they are safe to be so close to the eye also. So I wanna give a layering tip two um because and i'm gonna go through all of this but i want to i want to give a layering tip really really quickly if you feel like your eye area is very very sensitive who's ever had the experience of doing your skincare and you put on your eye product after your serums and then the eye area it feels very active, or you might even feel like a burning sensation. Who's ever put, and this can be any eye product, who's ever put any eye product around their eye after their serums, after all the things, and then it feels very active around the eye area. So what can happen is actually when you are layering something that is hydrating around the eye area, sometimes after we put our serums on, because look at, you can still see the anti-wrinkle moisturizer on my hands. I'd say I do my, my skincare and I put on my serums and my retinol, let's say at night. And then I don't realize I still have a little retinol on my hands. And then I go and put on my eye care. I'm applying maybe a little retinol on here inadvertently. But what can also happen, like I said, is our skincare expands as it absorbs. So we apply it here and maybe it's absorbing a little closer, but moisturizing and hydrating products help other products absorb faster and, and more deeply into the skin. So if you have very, very sensitive eyes, you can put on your eye cream before your serums. And so before you put on other active ingredients, you can cleanse and tone your skin and then put on your eye care actually first. The, and I like to switch the order of things for people that are more sensitive or are more prone to sensitivity. Um, and put on your eye cream first and then it'll buffer and protect it when you put on your other skincare and just help with that. Um, so let's get into it. So we wanna make sure on our, these areas that we are using gentle cleansing, free of SLS. The Go Pure Cleanser is free of SLS. That sodium lauryl sulfate is very harsh and stripping. So we wanna make sure we're not using cleansers and even being very careful when we wash our hands. But think about using cleansers that are going to cleanse the skin without being stripping, that don't have a pH that's too high. We wanna protect our skin barrier, especially in those areas. Now, exfoliation. <laughs> Let's talk about exfoliation. This product right here, the um, Microdermabrasion Resurfacing Exfoliator that always I stumble over, I just call it the microderm scrub, but this is really great for under the arms. We talked about how the underarm area is prone to growth of bacteria, clogged pores, ingrown hairs. You can actually apply this under the arm and let it set for like even five to 10 minutes. Let the glycolic acid, let the lactic acid in there and the salicylic acid get to work in the pore. And then you can gently massage it. That can help with the appearance of discoloration and really even help manage odor and all of those things because it can help really work to get in the pore and use it as like an underarm mask and scrub. It's great, I love it. 
Now, this is also great on the neck and decollete, um, but you just wanna make sure that you are not over scrubbing. So another option is, I love this combo in the shower. Um, so this lives in the shower for me. This is a shower. Because a shower, it's like, you can use this anywhere. Um, but who has thought to use the enzyme mask on, say, the backs of their hands in the shower? Who's thought to use the enzyme mask? Because remember, this is, has those enzymatic exfoliants and glycolic acid, but it's also packed with natural nourishing oils. In the shower, load it up. Load up the more sensitive areas with a product that... Um, nourishes as well as exfoliates. I love that. So play with this, not only outside of the shower, but in the shower and use this on areas that are more delicate because it has those awesome enzymatic exfoliants as well as those nourishing oils. So this is a great fun way to, you know, have a spa moment in the shower, but also make sure you're exfoliating gently on those delicate areas. Exfoliation on this area is really important to keep delicate and gentle. One other thing that you can do, sheet masks. Who's used our sheet masks? So who also has noticed that you use the sheet mask and there's still stuff on it? And there's still stuff in the pack, right? And we're always giving these away too. I love these sheet masks. You can also use the residual from the sheet mask, either when you remove it from your face or just what is in here to brighten or exfoliate. Just take what is left on here and you can apply that serum onto the backs of your hands, onto your neck and decollete. Um, and you could even use what is in this serum under the arms. What I'll say about exfoliating under the arms. Don't exfoliate under the arms um, within like 24 to 48 hours of shaving. So shaving is a form of exfoliation and it's gonna leave the skin more vulnerable and exposed. So we do wanna make sure if we're trying these cool exfoliation techniques under the arms that we have not just shaved right away. <laughs> That's an important side note. So I don't want anyone using um, our anti-wrinkle sheet mask serum under their arms right after they shaved. I have to make sure I say that. <laughs> But the sheet masks are amazing and there's so much serum and product in there so you can absolutely use what's left in that serum on those areas as well. So let's talk about serums. And I wanna talk about serums and ingredients here. So there's a lot of different serums that we can use. So drop in the comments what you use for serums. Um, do you use the originals? Do you use the trio of serums? Have you not tried the Go Pure serums yet? There's a lot of different serums, but remember skincare does not stop at the jawline. And these delicate areas need targeted care, but they can really, really benefit from the active ingredients in our serums, not just from a targeted moisturizing um, product that delivers those benefits. Serums are gonna really just supercharge your targeted care. So vitamin C, Daytime Superstar. This is the Brighten and Even Serum. I love her. She's amazing because this uses two forms of vitamin C that are both very, very gentle and good for sensitive skin. There's a lot of different types of vitamin C out there, a lot. And a lot of times when we're talking about vitamin C, and I did a whole live on vitamin C too that's in the VIP group, but L-ascorbic acid is pure vitamin C. So when you're seeing a lot of people talk about vitamin C in percentages, they're talking about L-ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid can be very hard on sensitive skin in sensitive areas. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate and caduco plum that we use in this formulation is much more easily tolerated on sensitive areas. And so I love this everywhere. Love, love, love this. This is amazing. I would not recommend it on your eyelid or too close to the under eye area, but I wouldn't be mad if it were just tapped right here, um, just along the ridge of this bone or up here for sure. But um, this is great on our hands, um, neck, decollete, love this during the day, but vitamin C can also be used day and night, which is why I absolutely love it. But again, like I always say with actives like that, I'm not gonna tell you to put it on your eye because <laughs> we just don't wanna do that. <laughs> or if you do, don't tell me. <laughs> so hyaluronic acid, hyaluronic acid holds a thousand times its weight in water. So 
Um, it's very hydrating. We talked about how when our skin gets dehydrated, how it just looks like our fine lines and wrinkles are much more prominent. Um, Sandy says she's the vitamin C serum. Um, yeah, so um, if you are looking for more targeted care on dark spots in particular, the spot pen right here, let me grab it, is what you want to use for much more targeted care in stubborn dark spots. And then the brightening sheet mask is amazing to integrate in like once a week. And then, where was it? Okay, hyaluronic acid. So this um, Hydrate and Smooth Serum has three different types of hyaluronic acid. Now, hyaluronic acid is great because it's, again, it is very well tolerated on thin, delicate skin because it doesn't have the weight and that moisturization. It's just focused on hydration. We wanna put it on damp skin. And again, this can be used day and night. I actually consider hyaluronic acid products and serums to be boosters. So, your vitamin C is a foundational daytime ingredient and active. I consider hyaluronic acid products a booster that can be used day and night that boosts the, the look of hydration in the skin and it works very, very well under our targeted care to boost that hydration. Um, so I love, love, love use, and this also has vitamin E in it, and vitamin E is very, very good on delicate areas, which is why I love the active trio of serums because you really do get everything you need for day and night. And take a little sip of water. You can definitely tell I don't have any foundation on because I'm getting very pink. It's warm in my office. <laughs> so I've got quite the glow going on right now, for sure. Um, now, retinol. I'm gonna share some retinol tips with you and I know I've gone over, I'm supposed to be in a meeting with my boss right now, but I'm live, so. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> But, um, so retinol, I gave you a little tip on retinol and how this Firm and Lift Serum actually has a Granactive retinol in it and Bakuchol, which is a retinol alternative. But our delicate areas, eyes, lips, around the nose, hands, even the chest um, and neck area and the backs of the hands can be more sensitive to retinol because it's thinner. And the skin is thinner and produces less oil. So we do wanna make sure we're not getting our retinol on the eye area, avoid the edge of the nose if you're very sensitive. Be very careful around the mouth. Learn that one myself. Um, and even with hands and neck and decollete, what can we do? Who wants to learn a tip? Oh, we're only we're at we're at 8k hearts. Let's see how many more hearts we can get. Let's drop some hearts, and I want to share you some of my retinol tips for use on delicate areas. Where is she? A retinol cream. Everyone needs retinol cream. I love retinol creams. <laughs> retinol creams make me so happy because they're kind of an all-in-one. When I need a really simple night routine, I cleanse, I tone, do my eye care, retinol cream, boom, done. Easy peasy. But did you know a retinol cream is really, really amazing for more delicate areas because you're gonna have those antioxidants, you're gonna have retinol in there, but it's in a moisturizing form. So it's kind of like your retinol sandwich in a jar. Who's heard of the retinol sandwich tip? So sandwiching retinol, you can absolutely sandwich your retinol product. So you put on your moisturizer, you put on some retinol, top with moisturizer, right? Sandwich it, boom, 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 and it buffers it for absorption. You can actually even on hands or anywhere on the body, because I'm seeing a lot of people talk about using retinol on the body generally. If you wanted to do that, you could actually even mix it but I um, just, you know, for hands, neck, decollete, but I really, really love a retinol cream for the backs of the hands in particular, or any other areas in the body that I maybe wanna target a little bit more. I love, retinol cream is so multifunctional. Um, where was I? Okay, yes. And it can even help with the development of milia on thinner skin. So thinner skin can be more prone to milia, and I, I think I saw that. Um, that people mentioning um, milia on, but I'm very prone to milia around my eyes, but even using retinol in those safe areas, we don't wanna get, I don't like getting retinol inside this, this ridge here, but it can very much help with it. Um, can you add the hyaluronic acid to your face before vitamin C dries? Yes, you can. Um, you can absolutely do that, Cindy. Now, um, I talked about exfoliation already. Now, niacinamide, who loves our niacinamide superstar? 
who loves niacinamide as a superstar? So niacinamide is barrier supportive, but it also helps with the appearance of discoloration, both dark spots and redness on the skin. And this formulation actually has additional ingredients that make this very, very hydrating and also additionally help improve the appearance of dark spots. So niacinamide, and I saw a question, someone asked, can you apply niacinamide more than just your face? You absolutely can. I love niacinamide for areas that lack oil naturally and like the hands they lack oil and the natural moisture factor niacinamide is supportive of that so areas that produce less oil naturally and are much more naturally barrier impaired can very very much benefit from the introduction of niacinamide under your moisturizer it's great <laughs> oh and i already showed you the eye eye tip um if yeah if your eyes are very sensitive apply your eye products before for your serums. That is a really great tip. Um, <laughs> and it's very, very important to make sure we're not tugging and pulling. We can tap, we can do gentle motions, but the more you tug and pull on the areas, if you get too aggressive with your application, um, it can just be damaging on the skin. So we do wanna be very careful that we are not additionally um, damaging the skin and the elastin that is so delicate on those thinner areas. Um, yes, so um, Brandy, the niacinamide serum was formulated to be used with our other products. It is a booster. So I would really say that both of these products in particular are really great used with your other actives. Um, yeah, the niacinamide is especially beneficial when you are using exfoliants. Well, and retinol and vitamin C. This just, because it is barrier supportive, it actually creates a synergy with your other active ingredients. Um, and so I consider niacinamide all of your other products best friend. <laughs> it's just amazing. I love this. Um, and if you feel like any serums are tacky, you can make sure your skin is damp when you're applying all, all of your serums except for retinol, you want your skin to be dry, but maybe apply a little less. When we're talking about four to five drops for serums, that really is kind of face um, and neck area. Play with the amount that you're using. You can play with the order of application, but generally even if there is a slight tackiness after serums once you top it with your moisturizer that is usually resolved because serums are very rich these serums are very rich in humectants and most serums are very very rich in humectants which means they they want to grab onto water and they want to pull them into the skin but they don't have as many of those oil ingredients so once you add on your moisturizer or oils that generally really does help with any stickiness or tackiness because those first layers with serums are focused on kind of the water component um, and hum humectants especially ones like aloe and glycerin can just have a little bit more of that feeling to it what point in the application should you apply the niacinamide niacinamide can be applied in any order with your other serums I usually do this order during the day after my cleanse, exfoliation, toning, any of that that I do, vitamin C, then my hyaluronic acid, which is my hydrate and smooth, and then my niacinamide. But it's actually fine if you wanted to do this in a different order. That's just what I do. And then at, at night, I would do the cleanse, let my skin dry, apply my retinol, not just the face, neck, back, the hands, the whole thing, then niacinamide and then eye care and moisturize. But moisturizing is very, very important. So I do wanna finish the conversation saying like, yes, this is like your special eye moisturizer that does all these great things. Yeah, my hands are slippery. This is your special neck moisturizer that does all those great things we talked about, right? This is your special face moisturizer that does all these great things. So it's, oh, it's important to have, um, so Yvonne is asking, clarify serums um, under the eye after creams. So I do, and I do wanna clarify that. I generally apply my eye care after my serums, but if you do feel like your skin is more sensitive and eye care feels active around the eyes, you can apply your eye care before your serums to buffer it to make sure you're not getting other serums too close to the eye because once you apply your eye care it can drive some of those ingredients in faster and sometimes we have residual um 
serums on our fingertips. So you do have to be careful, but eye care does go on before your actual moisturizer. Um, and so, and Kelly, I exfoliate, I, I say keep exfoliation to two to three times a week for sure, preferably at night. Um, oils. Oils, oils, oils. So we finish with oils and then SPF during the day if you wanna use oils. But oils are amazing for these delicate areas because these areas produce less oil naturally. So you can absolutely, who here loves the argan oil? For their hands, their nails, you can pat it around the eye if you feel like you have those dry patches. And I've seen people say they have dry patches. These oils are amazing because they are very safe for around the eye area. They're amazing for the lips. You can even make a really awesome lip scrub with just granulated sugar and oil to massage on the lips. But the oils are gonna be rich in those lipids that are very supportive of our skin's natural barrier and they're great on areas where we don't produce as much oil or like our lips don't even have those oil glands. So finishing with an oil, especially at night, can be amazing, but the argan is amazing because it is so great for the nails and for the cuticles. It comes in this big, huge jar and you can just slather it everywhere. And the oils are such an amazing way to finish off a routine where we are targeting those delicate areas. I love them so much. They are so great. So if you feel like the skin just is still feeling or in the winter or, you know, when you're traveling, if it feels additionally dry, you just feel like the texture of your skin um, just needs a little extra the oils are such a great way to finish a routine and I love them on my hands and my nails. Yeah, hair, great. Lips, nose. I mean, I oil up the end of my nose because I have allergies and I'm always so sniffly. Um, I love the oils on the ends of my nose because again, these delicate areas, you, you have to be really careful with actives and they do just get more dry. Um, and so the oils just can add that extra layer of protection and support and moisturization on those extra delicate areas. Um, and Brandy says, I find I love the oils better than moisturizers. There was a time when I, when was this? Probably my mid thirties, where I was really struggling to find a moisturizer that I felt like my skin loved. And so I just leaned into using oils, especially rosehip, and it was a really, really great for me. Um, I Rosehip is so amazing and it is packed with so many nutrients. Um, and it just kind of works for everyone's skin too, but that's, I absolutely did that in my mid thirties. I was all about, um, cause I just couldn't find a moisturizer that my, was appropriate for my skin and oils were great. <laughs> and I, that's one of the reasons I love GoPure too, is that I am normally like, there are skincare lines where I can maybe use this or I can use that and that maybe works and that doesn't. I use all the stuff, literally. <laughs> I don't have any makeup on. This is literally my, I mean, I have my brows and my mascara, but I do not have makeup on my face right now. Um, I have Gopier on my face. That's what I have and I love it. And I, my skin loves it and it makes me very happy. All right, that was amazing. Thank you so much for being with me today. I have gone 17 minutes over and I'm late for a meeting with my boss. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to say, if you want to rewatch this, if you didn't catch the whole thing, this will be put in our GoPure VIP community on Facebook. Um, so make sure you're in our VIP group. Next, if you have a question that you did not get answered because there are so many questions and I, it's sometimes hard for me to see them, um, put contact me in the comments and we will ping you and ask you for your email address and we can reach out and um, help answer your questions. Um, <laughs> Lil says her fingers cramping from all the hearts. We're at 16K, yes, I love that. That makes me so happy. Um, I really appreciate you all joining me on these lives. They're so much fun for me to help teach and share and help make your routine even better and just help you feel super confident in your routine. So, let me know if you guys have more questions, but contact me and we'll reach out. Congratulations to our winners. Um, it's always so fun to be on here and to be able to give you all a chance to win. If you guys did wanna grab anything that I was chatting about, you can always go to our website, but you can actually shop right here in the live, which is really, really cool also. Um, and 
Now we have our moment of zen at the end because there is a delay when I end these. So I had a question about eye care application. So I did want to, I'll just go through some of the ways that I apply eye care um, as we, ah, just bumped my camera. As we wrap this up, um, I will, um, I'll be applying this. So um, Ellen, I don't, um, they can, if there's a code, I will have Crystal drop it in there. But I think, so we just finished our Mother's Day sale. Um, and then if there is a code, um, maybe Crystal has it, but I don't know if we have one right now. So let's apply the eye care. And then um, I'm gonna show you my tips here, just really quick. Doo -doo -doo. So I love this because it's really, really um, lightweight. Again, the texture of targeted care is very, very important. Debbie, yes, yeah, so this is our eye cream from GoPure. We just launched it and you can grab it right here on the live. And I talked all about it and it's amazing. And we do, I did a whole live on it two weeks ago and it is in the VIP group and it's amazing. So um, it's very lightweight. Um, this is my trick because I have nails. I don't like digging into it. So I just take a little bit out with my nail. <laughs> And you take about a half pea size amount and you wanna split it between both eyes. I'm gonna start with a, just a light amount right now. And so yes, you can stay and watch or you can hop off <laughs> because I just, I wanna apply this but I don't wanna cut everyone off. Um, so I'm gonna split it between both eyes and I'm gonna take my fingers and just dab it on the area. I like to apply it, it's really cooling. And I'm going to, you can either pat and press around and just press it around and you can work it up here and underneath here and up on the lid. But one of my favorite tips is I like to do this sweeping motion inward and around, especially if you struggle with puffiness or dark circles. This is one of my favorite motions because this will apply the product and it's amazing. But you don't want to tug and pull. This gentle sweeping motion is actually like a mini lymphatic drainage massage and can really help with the appearance of puffiness and even potentially dark circles. So I like to do five sweeps around my eye, press, and you can do it with one finger. Sometimes I start my index and I just work through all of my fingers like this. Either way is fine. Press here on the temple and then we sweep down and back. So that is one of my favorite application tips. And then just do another little pressing. But you don't want to over apply um, eye products because again, the skin is thin and it, it can feel very heavy. Now I'll show you my neck trick as well as we finish this out. So I'm gonna take my neck cream. I like to do two pumps. I'm gonna put it on here. And same thing, we don't wanna tug and pull. And I go up the front of the neck, down the sides very delicately. I like doing this pumping motion. Back of the neck. Back of the neck. Cross here, oh, bump the microphone. Across here. And then onto the chest. It's hard with my outfit to do that. And then I just take what's left always on the backs of my hands. And it is amazing. And Irma Sue, the eye cream um, is formulated to target the appearance of lines and wrinkles, dark circles, puffiness, crepiness, all of it around the eye. But again, it's always going to depend on what um, is the real source of dark circles um, because they're caused by so many things, including physiology and just structural shadowing from bone structure and, and all of that. Um, so yes, back of the neck, hands, all of that. And yes, I love, I love the, the airless pump on this as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have an amazing day and we will see you soon. Bye.